Hi, it's Katrina. From skull masks made from warriors to the remains of a Slavic god pulled out of a river, here are 10 of the creepiest and most mysterious discoveries. Number 10. The Van Gogh Mummy A well-preserved mummy that looks almost identical to Vincent van Gogh's famous self-portrait was uncovered inside of an ancient church in Spain. He has red hair and a beard and everything. Nobody knows what this guy's name is, but he was one of 30 mummified corpses found during restoration work inside the Assumption of Our Lady Church in the small village of Quinto near Zaragoza. These mummies were found when the floor of the church was torn up to install a new heating system. Nobody had expected to find mummies under the floorboards. The corpses had been stored inside of wooden coffins, and there were 11 adults and 24 children. They were carefully wrapped in cloth and had originally been stored inside the chapel to await examination. But apparently, somebody forgot they were there and buried them beneath the foundations. The mummies are still being studied, so we don't know everything about them. They were found in such a remarkable state of preservation because of the extremely dry soil they were buried in. These people died near the end of the 18th century. While at first people thought they could have been monks, that turned out not to be true. Ancient monks were buried with bare feet, but these mummies were wearing special types of shoes built from straw and cotton that were usually used by peasants. That makes it kind of strange that they were buried in such a holy place. Researchers believe that they could have died during one of the epidemics that ravaged the region in the 18th century, such as smallpox or yellow fever. Number 9. The Aztec Skull Mask The ancient Aztecs had some of the most brutal rituals in the ancient world and were some of the most morbid people in Central America, as is evident from eight gruesomely disturbing masks found inside the Templo Mayor in Mexico. These skull masks are made from real human skulls and are absolutely creepy. Found alongside 30 decapitated skulls, experts were unsure why these masks were made. The theory was that they were left behind in the temple as an offering, but their purpose and who or where they came from remained a mystery. Even in the context of ritual sacrifice, these skull masks are very unusual. Biochemists and anthropologists have come together in a new study to solve the mystery once and for all. The masks come from two different groups of people, and they were made sometime between 1468 and 1481, during the reign of Emperor Aksayato. The skull masks were all made from males between the ages of 30 to 45, and these people had no evidence of dental disease and were in perfect health, pretty rare for back in the day. The skull masks had been heavily modified, with certain bones removed, and then they were dyed and decorated with blades, shells, and other precious materials. The researchers found that the cut marks and drill holes on the skulls used stone tool technology similar to other artifacts found in Templo Mayor. They say that this indicates that the individuals whose skulls became skull masks were probably brought to Tenochtitlan to be sacrificed and processed. Based on all of this, the researchers determined the skulls were made from captured or defeated warriors. Not just everyone was made into a skull mask. This fate was reserved for the most elite warriors and nobility. I wonder if these people were resigned to their fate and believed it to be an honor, or if they were terrified in their final moments. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Number 8. The Beheaded Owl Archaeologists investigating a pair of graves in Sweden were shocked to discover the creepy remains of a decapitated owl next to a warrior from the Iron Age. This mysterious discovery was made at the necropolis of Valsgard, which has been compared to the famous Sutton Hoo Cemetery in Britain. There are more than 90 graves at this archaeological site, dating from between 500 and 800 AD. The warrior was buried inside of a 32-foot boat, which was designed to carry the dead person into the afterlife. He was found wearing an ornate helmet, a sword, and a shield. His boat was filled with supplies and tools, while an assortment of animals had been buried beside the vessel. These animals included horses, which according to Professor Berglund, who worked closely with the project, were supposed to carry the warrior from his boat onto the shores of the underworld. The other supplies would also be taken with him as he started his journey into the afterlife. Decapitating the owl may have been a way of preventing it from rising from the dead. Experts have declared it a type of eagle owl, but nobody can figure out what significance it played in the warrior's afterlife. Number 7. The Slavic God 
One of the rarest, strangest, and creepiest archaeological relics was pulled out of a muddy river back in 1848 in Ukraine after being lost for thousands of years. This relic is known as the Zubruch idol and experts believe it depicts a pre-Christian god with four heads. This creepy limestone pillar is nearly 9 feet tall and it may still be missing a piece that would have made it even taller. The god depicted on the stone is probably Zvetovid, a four-headed god of war worshipped by the Slavic culture before the spread of Christianity. Researchers believe that the sculpture had probably been pulled down and then discarded in the river sometime between 800 and 1000 AD, right around the time that Christianity swept through Belarus, Ukraine, and Russia. There is still a mystery as to what exactly the idol represents. Sure, it could depict the four-headed god of war, or it could represent four totally separate deities that have been lost to the ages. Unfortunately, almost everything related to the old Slavic gods, including temples and statues, was destroyed when everyone started converting. For all we know, the idol wasn't even built by the Slavic people, but another lost group entirely. Number 6. Girolamo Segato's Corpse Petrification Girolamo Segato was a serious fan of mummification and after taking a long trip to Egypt in 1818, decided that preserving bodies was his calling. Mummification occurs when as much water is taken out of the body as possible before it is wrapped in cloth, but Segato wondered if he could turn the process around and add a special liquid to the body to petrify it. The outcome was terrifying but very good at keeping bodies looking like they've been turned to stone immediately after death. He worked on heads, breasts, elbows, and the bodies of infants, all of which had been injected with some kind of serum. Researchers also know that Segato injected his serum very soon after death as it had to travel through the veins for its proper effect. Though Segato's work would have been seminal in the field of body preservation, he chose to keep his notes a secret to the public, who at the time believed it was the work of Egyptian magic. His technique died with him, and to this day, no one has been able to reproduce it. And now for number 5, but first want to give a big shout out to Amir Hussein and Junior Phillips Mohawk Nation who is a new subscriber. Big thanks to you all for hanging out with us and if you are new here be sure to subscribe and join the Origins Explained family. Number 5. Who were the Canaanites? The biblical Canaanite civilization existed thousands of years ago in the Middle East. New DNA research and archaeological evidence is shining a much needed light on just who these ancient people were. The Canaanites are mentioned frequently in the Bible and were one of the earliest people to use an alphabet. The Canaanites were often fighting with the Israelite tribes who wrote the Hebrew Bible. The Canaanites kept their records on papyrus instead of clay, which easily disintegrated. So much of what we know about them comes from the archaeological evidence they left behind. Now, thanks to new technology, scientists have found a genetic trail leading back to the ancient world of the Canaanites. Scientists have sequenced the genomes of five people from the culture that lived 4,000 years ago, uncovered near the Lebanese city of Sidon. Interestingly enough, they compared the genomes of these people with 99 currently living residents of Lebanon. What they found was that 90% of the genetic ancestry of Lebanese people can be traced back to the Canaanites. Researchers also used the DNA evidence to conclude that the Canaanites settled farming villages in the Neolithic period 5,000 years ago. This means that they were descendants of Stone Age settlers and are the ancestors of the Lebanese. What's mysterious about this is that in the Bible, in the book of Deuteronomy, the Israelites are commanded to destroy the Canaanites, but it's later said that a few small communities survived. This new evidence is adding to the proof that some of the accounts written in the Bible are historically accurate. Number 4. Mummified Parrots New archaeological evidence from South America is proving that parrots and macaws were transported as exotic pets thousands of years ago, all across the Andes Mountains and to the deserts of Chile. Researchers have found and analyzed a collection of exotic birds found mummified at archaeological sites throughout Chile's Atacama Desert. This is the driest place in the world and definitely not where you find parrots living naturally. These birds came from over 300 miles away in the Amazon jungle. According to anthropologist José M. Capriles from Penn State University, the mummified parrots were buried between 1000 and 1450 AD, during a time when trade and commerce was growing in the region. These pets were popular during the gap between the fall of the Tiwanaku Empire and the rise of the Inca. 
This was when caravans of llama were packing goods through the Andes Mountains and various regions of South America. These birds would have been taken from the Amazon and then transported through mountain passes in the Andes over 10,000 feet up. It would have been tough just to keep the birds alive. These birds and their feathers were prized possessions to people in the Americas and are found in high status burials. Some of them were mummified with their mouths wide open and their tongues sticking out. Nobody is really sure why. Number 3. The Phoenician Shipwreck In 2007, a Phoenician shipwreck was spotted off the coast of Malta during an offshore remote sensing survey. It was a total accident. Researchers spotted an anomaly in the sonar data, and it turned out to be an ancient ship sitting at the bottom of the ocean from the 7th century BC. Teams were sent down to investigate, at which point they found ceramics and stones that had probably been traded through networks along the Mediterranean during ancient times. There were urns, jugs, grinding stones, and even funerary objects. The pure diversity in artifacts made the Phoenician shipwreck a unique archaeological resource in and of itself. Even though the shipwreck was discovered in 2007, it wasn't until 2014 when an international team of researchers could dive down and check out the ruins. It was almost impossible to bring relics back to the surface. The team had to go back again in 2016 to recover the bulk of the artifacts. It's unclear why the ship sank, where exactly it had been sailing to, or where the crew was from. All we know is that it was a trading vessel that operated in the Mediterranean around 3,000 years before today, and the fact that it lies at the bottom of the sea serves as a reminder of the dangers of the water. Number 2. Magic Hand Carving Archaeologists working in the West Bank of Israel recently discovered what they called a magic hand carved into an old stone slab. This magic hand carving dates back to the biblical kingdom of Judah. The artifact was unearthed inside a tomb at the archaeological site of Kirbet el Kom. 3,000 years ago, this place would have been part of the kingdom of Judah, which was an Iron Age nation located slightly south of the kingdom of Israel. The hand carving was discovered with ancient text chiseled into it, with the text being written in a lost form of Hebrew. A professor of biblical archaeology named Dr. Titus Kennedy said that the inscription may have had some kind of spiritual significance, and that it could have been associated with worshipping Yahweh. Many religious professionals are saying that both Israel and Judah worshipped Yahweh, which may also refer to the God of the Old Testament, and that this theory has been confirmed by the finding of the hand and the inscription. Number 1. Knife-Wielding Spider God Archaeologists working in Peru have discovered the creepiest mural in the entire country. They announced in 2021 that there is a giant mural of a knife-wielding spider god painted on the side of a mud-brick temple complex in the northern Vidu province, about 300 miles from Lima. The mural was probably painted by the ancient Kupiznike culture 3,200 years ago. It was done using ochre in shades of yellow, gray, and white. The mural was discovered by avocado farmers who had been using their machinery to plow the nearby fields. Incidentally, the farmers destroyed roughly 60% of the archaeological site while doing their plowing. But to be honest, they probably had no idea what they were doing. The temple complex is old and mostly fallen apart, hardly distinguishable from the crumbling rock and overgrown weeds. If not for the bright colors of the spider god mural, nobody would have known a temple once stood in the field. Archaeologist Regulo Franco Jordan told local newspapers that the temple complex was likely some kind of shrine used as a ceremonial center, and that the temple was probably dedicated to a water deity. The spider mural most likely depicts this deity, with the sacred water ceremony being held here between January and March, when the rainy season started. As for why this spider god was drawn wielding a knife? Well, that's anybody's guess at this point. Thanks for watching! Which of these discoveries did you like the most? What would you like to learn more about? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, because why not? See you next time. Bye.